Welcome back, everyone, to another edition of Rudy's Rant, powered by Come On Out, the podcast. I am your host, Rudy Rodriguez Shomat, and I got another rant for you today. But before we jump in, thank you for your continued support of our channel. We greatly appreciate you. We thank you so much as we continue to move this channel forward, onward, and upward. We are going to be hitting a lot of different topics, football, MMA, boxing, uh, bare-knuckle fighting, we're going to hit some baseball, and soon enough, it'll be NBA basketball starting up next month, actually. <laughs> actually, this month. We're in October, <laughs> actually, to, as of tomorrow, as of 20 minutes from now. So be, be on the lookout for all of that content. But let's talk about this. Uh, we haven't talked about this yet, but the unrivaled women's three-on-three league. I'm flabbergasted that this is actually a thing. And I'm not saying that for purposes of being mean or downgrading or dismissing or disrespecting. I'm talking about this from purely a business perspective. The WNBA has been a colossal, catastrophic failure for 27 years. It's never produced a dime of profit. It's needed an NBA subsidy for 27 years. It needs the NBA to give it money from television deals because the reality is the WNBA cannot in any way produce the type of television revenue that they would so like to have, right? So let's look at this from a a more wider lens. You don't make money in the WNBA. You don't make profit. Your buildings are empty, largely, if Caitlin Clark isn't there. Players are paid between $75,000 and $250,000 a year. Your rookies are paid $75,000. Your average salary, I don't know, might probably $130,000, I would presume. I'm guessing. I'm throwing out a number. I have no idea. I know that their cap is like $250,000, $252,000, something like that. And there's only a few players that make that type of money. There's only like a hand. I know there's only a certain amount that make 200,000 or above in the WNBA. So largely a lot of their money comes from endorsements. And realistically, there's only a few players that really can command any level of endorsements. And two of them are rookies, Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese. I mean, Asia Wilson has some endorsements. Sabrina Inescu has some endorsements. Uh, those are the two. I mean, I've seen Jewel Lloyd on a commercial. I've seen Kelsey Plum on some commercials. But nothing that you would say is probably earth-shattering, life-changing coin. There's probably 100 players that don't have an endorsement dollar because no one's ever heard of them and no one cares about them. So Brianna Stewart and Nafisa Collier decided to found this three-on-three unrivaled women's basketball league that they are going to start in January 2025. Now, what happens in January? I'm at this point where I just think that people really don't consider who their competition is. They just don't consider their competition. The NFL playoffs are in January. If you think the viewership of the WNBA playoffs is poor against week three and week four NFL football, what do you think it's going to look like against NFL playoff games? What what do you really think it's going to look like? I would hope that they choose to do these events on Friday or Thursday. But I have this feeling that they're going to try to run these things on a Saturday or a Sunday and think that they actually have a real demographic that's going to supersede NFL playoff football. And uh, it depends on when they start. I don't know what specific date they look on. They look to start, but they might also be competing with some college football too. If they start early in the month. Now, the league was founded, as I mentioned, by Brianna Stewart and Nafisa Collier. And they have a laundry list of investors. I really think at this point, 
that anyone that's investing in this league is doing it as a charity. Just like the NBA has the WNBA as a charity. It's a welfare. It's a welfare league. It's a tax write-off. It's a loss. I don't know why, why these people would want to lose money. They're better off just donating to some organizations that need it, i.e. poor people who need resources because WNBA players have the ability to go play elsewhere and you in what world do you, can you not make a living on 80, off 80 grand a year as a single person At, in what world can you not live off 150 grand a year as a single person even a married person in what world can you not live off that I get it it's not remotely close to what NBA players make but the average salary in Miami, Florida, for example, is like under 40 grand. So when I hear a pro athlete who plays three months of basketball or four months of basketball a year complain that they're making only 200 grand or 150 grand, I don't cry. I don't weep for them. You're playing a sport four months a year. You're getting paid. You're getting paid the equivalent of damn near half a million dollars a year to play basketball for three and a half, four months to see a year. They started in mid May. They're going to finish the season in mid-October. So that's June, July, August, September, October. Okay, five months. The rest of the – there's only a few teams – there's a few teams that have, that were done mid-September. But this league has a bunch of investors, of high-profile investors, such as U.S. Women's National Team soccer player Alex Morgan and Megan Rapino, UConn women's basketball coach Gino Ariema, former NBA All-Star Steve Nash and Carmelo Anthony, five-time LG, LPGA champion Michelle Wee West, actor Ashton Kutcher. <clears throat> I know I see John's former ESPN John Skipper, Metal Arc Media is involved in this. He's also an investor in the league. I mean, look, there's names. But how much money are you truly investing into this? I, I'd love to know. The commissioner of this league, will, will the president of this league will be Collier's husband, Alex Bazell or Basil. <clears throat> like that seems like a conflict of interest <laughs> to have your husband as the person in charge. But okay. This is going to be not half court three on three. This is going to be a condensed full court. So I'm going to presume it's probably going to be like the size of a a court that you might see at an LA fitness because those are not regulation courts. Those courts might be, might be 70 feet long. They're definitely not 94 feet long. Um, <clears throat> so I can presume that it's probably going to be a smaller court, but you're playing three on three on a full court. You're playing three on three in a 70 foot court because half court, half court would be 42 feet. So you're going to extend that by another you, – I mean, if it's full court, you got to extend it by at least another 30 so you can have legitimate three-point shots. Again, I have not seen a diagram of the court, so I don't know. But I'm going to guess it's going to remind me of some of these smaller, like an L.A. fitness-sized court or a court you might see at the park, which are never regulation size. But again, three on three. It's interesting. It's interesting to say the least. Here's some more of the investors. Uh, David Levy, co-chief executive of Horizon Sports and Experiences. Uh, other seed round investors include Range Group, former Warner Brothers chief executive and Sarnoff. Uh, <clears throat> Let me see who else. I, I just, it's very intriguing to say, it's intri in, intriguing to say the least. It's got a sponsorship from Ally Financial. I guess Ally Financial is looking for a tax write off because, again, investing means you're trying to actually make, make money, you would think. But you can't possibly, you cannot possibly think that you're going to make money on a league on a league of three-on-three -three basketball 
when the WNBA hasn't produced a profit in 27 years, 28 if you want to add this year to it. The unrivaled league cannot get a commitment from Caitlin Clark. Of course you're not going to get a commitment from Caitlin Clark. You've been trying to kick her ass all year, physically. You haven't played her properly. You've also now heard that Asia Wilson's not going to play either. So arguably your two best players in your league, definitely your most marketable player, is not going to play. These are the names of the players that are currently committed. Brianna Stewart, Nafisa Collier, Chelsea Gray, Marika Gumbawale, Jewel Lloyd, who apparently her nickname is Gold Mamba, Kelsey Plum. They all go by these nicknames here. They're going by Stewie, Queen Fee, Point God, Arike, Gold Mamba, Plum Dog, Ryan Howard, Ryan, Ka Copper, Jackie Young. Now apparently Angel Reese's newest nickname is 305 Barbie because this league is going to be in Miami, for primar- primarily going to be played in Miami. So now she's the 305 Barbie. I guess wherever she goes to play is what she becomes the Barbie of. I promise you we are in Dade County. Miami-Dade County got plenty more Barbies than that. De'Erica Hamby, Kayla McBride, <clears throat> Marina Mabry. Who's this unicorn one here? Satu Sabali, <clears throat> Alicia Gray, Natasha Cloud, Skylar Diggins-Smith, Rikea Jackson, Dijanae Carrington, Courtney Vandersloot, Slim, that's Brittany Sykes, Shakira Austin, and Tiffany Hayes. They have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven open spots because they want to have 30 players for six teams. And each team's going to have five players. So you're going to have substitutions. I think there's going to be a coach and all that stuff as well. Uh, general manager or whatever the hell for each team. They're going to have that for each team. The games will be played in a one-hour broadcast window. There will be four quarters of play, so 10-minute quarters, game clock, shot clock, coaching. They will be conducting interviews for coaching candidates. You see we'll have a head coach and assistant coach. There's going to be a one-on-one single elimination tournament played in February to determine the best 1v1 player in the world. Whatever. (laughs) Whatever. This is – Look, man, I, 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 there is a three out of three right now called the Big Three. And it's a bunch of retired basketball players with Ice Cube's league. I don't know how much money that league has made. I don't know if it's made any money. I have absolutely no idea. And I don't know what they're paying those guys. I don't know. But it has survived for a few years now. And people go. People do go. Tickets are dirt cheap as well. But how many people do you think are going to go to a three-on-three women's basketball league when those same people won't? Oh, by the way, you're doing this in Miami? Good luck. Good luck. The first week might do well. After that, nobody's going to care. This is Miami. If you're doing this for any lengthy period of time in Miami, good luck. I just find this thing to be something that's just doomed for failure. And it's a great thing in theory. But you're not making money in the WNBA. Why the hell would you think that you're going to pay these women $250,000 a head? 250k ahead. The WNBA entire uh, <clears throat> payroll is like 18 million for everyone in that league. You're gonna have a payroll that's gonna be close to seven or eight million dollars in this league with six teams, 30 players. This has got to be the weirdest thing I've ever seen and you would you have a lot of really intelligent people that are jumping in on this and I'm not talking about the athletes I'm talking about the business people like John Skipper you have a lot of intelligent business people jumping in on this 
but I don't understand it. David, this is a comment from David Levy. I've been in this business for now 38 years, who is the co-founder and co-CEO of Horizon Sports and Experiences, which has invested in Unrivaled. This product is coming at the right time. It might be the right time if Caitlin Clark was playing. It might have an actual opportunity to succeed if Caitlin Clark was playing, but she's not. She's your eyes. She's your draw. She's still the draw. It's it's this sounds like charity. This sounds like another welfare situation. Some well-known people feel bad for WNBA players and they want to throw them some coin so they don't have to go across the across the world to play basketball in Russia or Turkey or France or Spain or whatever country they got to go across the country across the world to play in. They don't want them to have to do that. And that's great. But that's a charity because you're not going to make money back off of this. The NBA has lost hand over fist on the WNBA for 27 years. What in the hell makes you think you're going to make money off of this? I'm going to give you an example of one of these hokey ass leagues that have been trying to be successful forever <clears throat> or for quite some time. Remember the XFL? Vince McMahon thought he could create an and a, a football league in the spring that people would actually watch. You'd create corny, hokey things on how to who gets the ball first by sprinting to a ball or whatever the hell they did. Different camera. The one thing he did a lot of, which was great, was techn technologically speaking, he brought in camera angles that the NFL did not have. So those camera things, those technological components, he did things that had not been done in the NFL, but they lost their shirts. People don't watch minor league football in the United States. There's no interest in minor league football. You know what minor league football is? It's college football. College football is minor league football. And college football is played in front of stadium seating 100,000 people. In the Southeast United States, in the SEC, the Big Ten, in the North, and in the Northeast. So the Southeast and the Northeast, the Midwest. You're talking about – that's minor league football. But there's a passion behind that minor league football. It's called college. So the XFL crashed and burned in a year. It came back years later, and it crashed and burned again in a year or less than a year. And then The Rock thinks that because he's The Rock, he's going to magically make this football league matter. The Rock, people love you, but people aren't going to pay tickets to watch trash can football of guys that got cut from the NFL. If they're going to watch a lower level brand of football, people are going to would be better off watching the CFL because those are guys who were on the cusp of making the of being NFL players. The guys that are in the XFL or whatever, UFL or U whatever, USFL, those guys are behind underneath the CFL guys. NFL, CFL, and now you got the rest of them. The Arena Football League, leagues, I know there's multiple. But they tried, and it failed twice. So The Rock gets involved, and he thinks he's going to change things. By midseason, it was a colossal failure again. It doesn't matter how many times The Rock shows up to a stadium. This isn't the WWE. This isn't WrestleMania. This is football. And the typical American football fan's not going to watch third rate football, let alone pay for tickets for it. <clears throat> so, what happens? The USFL and the XFL combine to create the UFL, which started. 
in the spring of this year. How many UFL games did you watch this year? Truthfully. How many did you actually watch? Who won the championship? Do you have any idea? What channels were those games on? Do you know? It says they were on Fox, Fox Sports 1, ABC, and ESPN. I didn't watch a single game. And I'm a sports junkie. The XFL lost $60 million in 2023. The Rock and his ex-wife, Danny Garcia, lost a fortune on that train wreck. A bad investment is a bad investment. And I guess The Rock, because he's worth a half a billion probably, can afford to lose 20, 15, 10, 20, whatever million he lost specifically. But I guess he didn't want to keep losing at the level he was losing. So I guess he wanted to bring come in with more people so more people have chips in the game. I guess they're saying that UFL will be back. I mean, good. I'm, I'm happy for the people, but this isn't a money-making operation. This is another charity. And people taking massive, massive tax losses and write-offs. Because there's no way in the world that you're sitting here telling me, do you want, uh, you're, you're happy to lose $10 million. What was the average attendance? The average attendance of a UFL game was 13,512 fans per game. I want you to think about that for a second. Caitlin Clark averaged more fans playing for the Indiana Fever in a basketball arena than the UFL did playing at Ford Field. Ford Field. How much does it cost to rent Ford Field, which seats 65,000 people, and average 8134 per game? The cost of police, the cost of concessions, the cost of staffing. I mean, the costs have to be uh, uh, outrageous. The Houston Roughnecks, 7,056 fans at Rice Stadium. The Memphis Showboats, 6893 at Simmons Bank Liberty Stadium. How much is that? Play? Bank Liberty Stadium. That place seats 58,000. I mean, can we go on and on? The, the record they had was 40,000 against St. Louis. <clears throat> the UFL attendance figures fell short of the XFL attendance figures. It seems like the only team that people actually went to go see play was the St. Louis Battlehawks because they don't have any football in St. Louis anymore. The D.C. Defenders, 14,143. The San Antonio Brahmas, 11,888. The Birmingham Stallions, 10,255. The Arlington Renegades, 9,887. Again, Michigan Panthers, 8,134. Houston Roughnecks, 7,056. The Memphis Showboat, 6,893. They brought in less people to all these games than Caitlin Clark did in his fucking basketball season. I, I cursed. I, I, I broke myself. I'm just like, oh my God. Caitlin Clark drew more people in her basketball games than eight teams did in all their football games. The championship game drew 27,396. And people think, and people, and tell me who played for either team. Tell me who played. It was the Birmingham Stallions and the San Antonio Brahmas. Tell me who played for those teams. I don't, I have no idea. 
And this is no disrespect to these guys who are trying to make their dream come true. But it's one thing to talk about minor league football. It's another thing to talk about some hokey-ass three-on-three league that only includes 30 players who you're hooking up. Because really, they have a list of probably 40 or 50 players that they want would take a look at. And after that, they have zero interest in other people. And you want to pay these people between one hundred and two hundred fifty thousand dollars? If Caitlin Clark was playing, she'd be commanding a million. Because she's the only reason people would watch this crap. But people keep thinking that these project leagues are going to work. The WNBA remains a project league in itself. It's a charity case. It's welfare basketball. And all these intelligent business people are basically giving their money away. That's my opinion. I could be wrong. I could be wrong. I don't know how much profit Ice Cube has made, but you know what? Or or if he's made any profit. But the big three features actual former NBA players who, if they went on the three-on-three court versus the women of this unrivaled league, would mop the floor with them. Would mop the floor with them. How much are you going to – where is this going to get played in Miami? At the Kaseya Center? At the Watsko Center where the Hurricanes play? Where FIU plays? Where Nova plays? Where? Where is it going to get played? At Miami High's gym, I mean, I mean, where they do the Miami Pro Am League, where are they going to run this crap out of? And I know there's been there was words about how they're going to travel to different cities, so you're going to incur more costs. This is insanity to me. I don't get it, but it, there, but it's this, this the level of we're going to show you that people actually care about watching us. And you know what? Best of luck to you. If you prove me wrong, I'll say I was wrong. But I also knew what was going to happen with this year's, this this season's, you know, this season, with the WNBA, and I haven't been wrong yet about that. Three on three women's basketball on a full court, compressed court. God. God. They just drew eight thousand five hundred people to a playoff game. In the semis in Minnesota. Folks, if you don't know Miami, Miami is an event city. It's an event city. There's a reason why when the UFC brought these low-level cards that no one went. Because Miami does not celebrate mediocre bullcrap. Miami celebrates events. So what did the UFC finally get right? In 20, what year? What year are we in? We're in 24? In t- April or whatever, March, April 2023, last year, when they brought the UFC fight card pay per view down here and they put on Alex Pereira versus Israel Adesanya, they brought an event and that place went bananas. And what did Dana White learn that day? He learned you can't bring bull crap to Miami, you got to bring real stuff. You can't throw contender series fight cards and think people in Dade County and Broward County are going to watch that or pay for it. I've been to plenty of UFC fight night events here where there was 8,000 people. People here don't care about that crap. They want to see the names. They want to see the title fights. Sugar John O'Malley and Chito Vera, what they do? They did 19,000 people, sold out building. Place was bananas. you got to bring events here. The Super Bowl. Dude, the Miami Heat. Might be sold out, but most of their games have three to 5,000 empty seats every single game. I'm not making this up. I'm there. I have season tickets. Three to 5,000 empty seats every single game. But those tickets are sold. But people don't care. The Miami Dolphins tonight were giving away tickets for $15. Because we got no quarterback. The Miami Hurricanes are now 5-0. and There was 10,000 empty seats in that stadium on Friday night in what was an epic game. 10,000 at least. Probably more. You need to bring events here. Events are what draw attendance. And I'm sorry, but Angel Reese is not an event. Three-on-three women's basketball is not an event. But you want to prove me wrong? Go for it. I would love to see it. Let's see what happens. But this, to me, looks nothing more than another charity case 
just like the WNBA. I'd love to know your thoughts. Leave your thoughts in the comments. Let me know what's up. What do you think? Do you agree with me? Do you think I'm crazy? Do you think I'm off? What? Because I cannot see these guys making any kind of money on this thing. The Rock could not get people to watch his minor league football. Lost $60 million. I can't imagine there's been $60 million in investments into this into this three-on-three thing. God, I'm like, I, can't, I can't imagine. Let me know your thoughts. Love to hear what you guys say. Come on now.